The PAV in PAVRE stands for Persistence of Vision, and the RE stands for Ray Tracer. So to get you started, we'll do a very simple little drawing here. We'll draw a ball or a couple of balls or something like that. When you bring up Pavre, you might have several different windows open here. If you followed Lesson Zero, you would have the Nothing window open. Go ahead and close all windows except the Message window. And then click on New. And that gives you an untitled window where you can tell Pavre what to do. So Pavre is a scene description language. And what that is, is just a text file with a bunch of commands that tell Pavre what to draw. Every object in Pavre has certain properties, and the properties must be enclosed in curly set brackets. So for our first object, we're going to draw a ball. And a ball in Pavre is called a sphere. So you type the word sphere, S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. And then you type an open or curly set bracket, hit the return a few times, and type a closed curly set bracket. Every object has to have these set brackets surrounding the properties of the object. A property of a sphere is its center. We are going to place the center right in the middle of the screen. And every object's location is described in terms of three numbers in angled brackets. So let me put angle bracket 0, 0, 0. The zeros simply tell Pavre that it's right smack in the middle of the screen. Then we have to give the sphere a radius. Let's say we give it a radius of 2. So what I've said here is we're going to draw a ball, a sphere. Its center is going to be 0 left or right, 0 up or down, and 0 in or out. So the first two numbers are left and right, and the third number is in and out. And I'll show you what those mean more precisely in a moment. But for now, let's see what happens if we click on the Run. If you click on Run, you get a little message here, Save Before Render. File Untitled has been changed. Automatically click on this little box here. Automatically auto-save files for the rest of this session. Then click on Save. And we have to give it a name. So let's call it Less1, L-E-S-1, for Lesson 1. And then click on Save. And it draws us a black window. Well. We'll close that window, and the reason we're getting a black window might be that we haven't given the sphere a color. So what we can do is we can give it a pigment. That's pigment. And again, open set brackets. We'll call it red, and then close the set brackets. Now let's see what this does. Okay, when it highlights something in yellow, it tells you there's something that is wrong, some kind of error. If you look at the bottom of the screen, it says parse error, no matching something or other in pigment. I don't understand that. It says undeclared identifier. Okay, what's happening is that we need to tell Pavre what the word red means. And that's in a special file called colors.inc. So what you do is you tell Pavre at the beginning, number sign include, and then in quotes, colors.inc. That file contains the definitions of the various colors like red, blue, and so forth. Now if we click on run, that error should go away. Let's see what happens. Oops, I didn't spell include right. Include, I-N-C-L-U-D-E. Now try it. Aha! At least we didn't get an error, but it's still black. Now the reason it's black is we haven't told Pavre where the camera is, and we haven't given it a light source. 
Before we can put a camera and a light source in, we need to understand the coordinate system that Pavre uses. Now, if that third number, z, is zero, we can think of it as a piece of graph paper with the x going left and right, that's the first number, and the y going up and down, that's the second number. When we said the sphere is located at the origin, or zero, 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 that's like saying the center is at zero, zero on the xy plane, and we also told it it has a radius of two. So a cross-section of the sphere would look like this. Now there's a third axis called the z-axis. That goes in and out of the screen. Positive values of z are behind the graph paper and negative values in front of the graph paper. So we want to put the camera somewhere in front of the graph paper, say negative five units in front, like this. We also want to put a light source in our picture. Let's say we put it four units to the right, six up, and then 10 units out. So first let's put the camera in. You've typed the word camera. And again, opening set bracket and closing set bracket. And then in between the properties of the camera, we have to tell it where the camera is. So that's location. And we decided that it's uh, right in the center, but five units in front of the graph paper. So zero, zero, negative five. And you also have to tell it what to look at. So look underline at, and we would like it to look right at the center of the screen. So look at zero, zero, zero. So that's how we put the camera in. Let me uh, bring this up a little. And we need to put in a light source. And the way you do that is light underline source, open set bracket, close set bracket. And in between, we have to tell it where the light source is. Let's see, we decided probably four to the right, six up, and 10 units back. And we also have to tell it what color the light is, and we'll say white. Uh, let's see how this works. Aha! Now we can see our sphere. We have a black background. The sphere is kind of dim. The ball is a little bit dim. A way to brighten it up is to give it a finish. Finish and say ambient. Ambient adds a certain amount of light to it. It takes a number between zero and one. Zero adds no additional light and one makes it completely bright. So I usually use a value less than 0.5. Let's say ambient 0.4. Let's run it again and see how this looks. Ah, much better. It's a bright, bright sphere. Now, another thing we can do is change that background from black to some other color. That's very easy to do. Let's put it after the light source. You type background, oops, I better spell it right, background, uh, open set brackets, let's call it gray, oops, and let's see how this looks. Okay, so you can make the background whatever color you want it to be. I'd like to move the camera back a little more. Let me move it back to negative 10 instead of negative 5 because we're going to do some other things with this. Okay, same ball, but the camera's been moved back. Now there's a better background. That's kind of a dull, uniform color. Let's take out the background here and we're going to do something else. There's what's called a sky sphere. It goes like this. Sky underline sphere. 
and again opening bracket and closing bracket. What we can do is we can put a gradient in there. So let's see, pigment. Pigment needs an opening and closing bracket, so let me do those first. And what we can say is gradient. Now I want the gradient to go up and down in the y direction. I'm going to make it like a sky that's uh, sort of whitish at the horizon and blue way up. So what you do is with the gradient you put what's called a color map. Color underline map. And that also needs an opening and closing set bracket. So I'll put those in. And we're going to have use two colors. Here's how you do it. You put a square bracket. You use numbers from 0 to 1. At 0 we want the color white. And at 1 we want the color blue. I'm not sure if you need to write the word color there. I'm using the wrong closing bracket. It's a square bracket there. Um, like that. Now what this does is a color map with a gradient starts at the zero color and then it gradually goes up to the one color. And let's take a look and see what this is like. Very interesting. Now these numbers are from 0 to 1, so apparently it's in the middle of the screen. So 1 is at the top, 0 is at the bottom, except it's offset. So maybe if we move it down half a unit, we can get it to look more like a sky that we want. Now a way you can move this color map down is right after, or the gradient, you can put what's called a translate. Trans late and you give it coordinates where you want to translate. You don't want to move it x-wise, but we want to move it half a unit in the y direction. So let's say negative 0.5 because I want it down in the y direction and zero in the z direction. So what that's going to do is it's going to move all of this, the gradient and the color map, down half a unit in the y direction. Let's see how this looks. Ah, that does look like a sky now. See, it's whitish at the bottom and blue at the top. Well, let's see what else we can do with this. Maybe we can make some more spheres. Let me copy that sphere. So highlight it. You can do Control C to copy, or you can go to the Edit menu and copy. And then below it, you can do Control V or go to Edit Paste. And we have two copies of the same sphere, but let's move the first one left. Let's say that we move it left two units. And let's say we move the, one, the other one to the right two units. And now let me make it four units. And let's change its radius to one. And let's change its color to blue and see what's happening. So I've got the original sphere two units to the left instead of at the origin, and the other sphere two, three units to the right. Now nah, let me make it four units to the right. Four units to the right, and I made it blue. Whoa, I put blue in the wrong place. What happened? I lost the pigment. All right, let's copy the pigment over. Copy. Okay, paste pigment, and I want that to be blue. Let's see what this does. Ah, very interesting. So here's our blue sphere centered four units to the right, our red sphere centered two units to the left. Let's put one more sphere in there. Let's copy this last one. Control C for copy. Control V for paste. Let's change its color to yellow. Let's put that one right at the center. 
and see how that looks. I've got a radius 1 on that. Hmm, notice how it sort of merges with the red sphere. What if I set its radius back to 2? Okay, you see what happens when they overlap, they kind of get squished together. They merge together. Well, that should give you an idea of how you set things up in Pavre. Well, that's it for this lesson. In lesson two, we'll look a little more closely at the sky sphere, the colors that you can use, and how to translate things, and also how to scale things and make them look a little more interesting.